Hello everybody and welcome to Electronics with a Drink. I'm your host Ross and this is my Bacardi Gold and Diet Coke. Yes, I still have a straw. Stop making fun of me. Okay, today I have a special request from one of my viewers. And this was from... Siyu Nahain, I believe it is. Can you help? I cannot run the ESP286. ESP8266, I was trying to upload the firmware, but for its, for some reason it's not working, translating in real time. Do you have any documents? Thank you so much. Um, no, I don't have any documents. So what I did is I asked him for more information. To run in the ESP8266 in Cayenne, a bit more specific, and I'll put together a video. So. Uh, the understanding wasn't mutual. He thought I already had a video, and I said, no. First, you need to tell me what you're doing. So are you using the 1, the 12, the 7? He told me. He's using the 1, and he wants to connect to Kyan. So I'm going to do that. Um, this is coming from one of my videos that I put out seven months ago. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to configure an ESP01 with the Arduino code similar to what we wrote last time looks very similar but it's broken down in a little bit more simple, uh, simplistic form due to the fact that we don't have an analog out or analog in for the ESP01 we only have pin GPIO2 that's readily available without blocking our TXRX from the serial connection uh, so we're gonna have to just go ahead and use input 2 for now and what I did is I just used the, the the code that we used for the the Dallas DS18V20 uh, previously on our other uh, uh, workspace. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the beginning and show him what needs to be done. I'm hoping this will help other people as well. So to start, we first need to understand what we need to pin out. Uh, this is the board itself. This is an ESP01. And uh, if you look uh, in detail, uh, you've got your uh, transmit that goes to receive on your FTDI. You've got receive that goes to your transmit on your FTDI. And you've got your 3.3 volts and your ground. Now, we're not using 3.3 volts because uh, I have external power to the ESP8266 uh, via 3.3 volt connection. Now, take a break over here, buddy. Now this is the board itself. Um, I've had to kind of doctor this a little bit. This is the FTDI connector and I've had to use uh, jumper wires for it. So here in the back is your 3.3, your uh, 1117 power supply. Um, this is your, um, this is the 3.3 volt rail and this side is the 5 volt rail. Now this is wired according to uh, some of the diagrams you'll see online for getting an ESP8266 to flash. Um, so we'll start from the beginning. Now I have two one f microfarad uh, uh, capacitors here that are used to regulate the power and eliminate the spikes uh, that go through the system. Uh, that keeps the thing from resetting for some odd reason if it ever does. Now this this notepad identifies my different colors. So we've got receive orange, GPIO zero yellow, uh, gr uh, GPIO two green, ground is blue, uh, voltage 3.3 is purple, reset is gray, CHPD is white, and transmit is black. Now I did that on this board. It's These are just regular jumper wires. It's male to female. So this is the female end and the male ends are the, uh, the pins on this side. So this wire that's hanging out, if we look at this here, we go down and we find our yellow. That's GPIO zero. That has to be pulled low when you do a flash. Okay. You've got your um, this is uh, white is your CHPD and that is a 2K2 resistor. I've got my reset button here. You can it's it's crossing over the um, the, the the breadboard just because it doesn't work any other way. We've got a 10K resistor that's pulled up 
from 3.3 volts on the reset value and then on the other side of the the, um, the reset button we've got it to ground that resets the actual device so <clears throat> on the ESP01 this is a newer version with the four mega, uh, megabytes of memory this is your power and that's your GPIO2 pinout um, that's just signifying that there is some kind of data crossing over the actual pin so we'll push that once it resets it goes through its little uh, little uh, cycle and then brings it up and then comes out on Wi-Fi so what else we have is in the back here I'm not sure if you can see it very well this is the Dallas DS 18B20 um, this is the only thing I have set up on this board right now um, I can probably do um, I could probably pull GPIO zero high and then connect it to a relay uh, but I will explore that in later uh, in a later video uh, we've got a 4k7 resistor that crosses over VCC to DO and that's in the um, data sheet for the Dallas DSATB20 uh, and then your ground and then also a cap that's used for crossing over the 3.3 volt uh, threshold to keep voltages from spiking or dropping uh, causing issues what I did is I had to on the uh, uh, FTDI cable I just had to use female uh, male to male jumpers to break it out from the breadboard to the actual device so that being said let's go back to the let's go back to the Arduino code now that we've got everything wired up um, I'll have everything that I'm showing here in the link below for in below with a link to each one of these pages to show you the breakout of the devices so before we do that we'll go to this one and this is a good ESP01 pinout diagram the, I've got all of these for the ESP series boards it gives you a good general generalization of, of what's going on so it's like I said this is the power LED and then the COM LED then you've got GPIO 0, GPIO 1, which is, as we've seen on the 12, that is transmit, and then GPIO 3 is receive. We can use these pins, but only if we're not using um, the FTDI cable to program the actual device. And to do that, we have to pull um, GPIO, GPIO 0 low and uh, bring the um, ESP01 into program mode. Here is GPIO 2. Um, this is the one we're using right this instant for the uh, for the sensor. Ground, VCC for your voltage, and then your external reset button, and then your chip enable or CHPD. These are all connected up. We've got it going. It's running now as we speak. So we go back to the code and we look exactly what we've done here. So what we've got is, let me take that one out. We've got constant pen, uh, uh, constant integer pen, temp pen 2. Oh, wait. Let me go back up here. So, back it up. <laughs> so here are the regular includes I had before, the definitions, and also the other includes that I had before. Um, there's not much difference. I just basically took some of the stuff out to, to alleviate confusion on um, the other, between this one and the other um, bit of code that I wrote to to make the ESP12 work with Cayenne. Constant integer temp pen 2 hasn't changed. Uh, character token that hasn't changed. We're using the same character token we had in the other one just for demonstration purposes. The SSID password, the one wire for Dallas temperature, um, the definitions or the defines where it's going to or where it's coming from. Now this is where it's going to. Um, then your serial begin this will take out if we end up using GPI 1 and 3. Uh, then your call kind began and it pulls in your uh, token SSID and password. Pin modes will take out pin 3 just to alleviate it. Pin mode 2 is an input, of course, because it's a Dallas DS 18B20. And then your void loop, Cayenne run. And then here, uh, Cayenne out. This one's calling up virtual pin 2 again inside of the Cayenne um, uh, front end. And then your sensors. Your request temperature, and then I've got the um, virtual write, cayenne.virtualwrite, going to V2, oops, 
going to V2, virtual uh, pin 2, uh, with Celsius. Okay, So we got to make sure that we keep that in line with what we're doing on the actual Cayenne dashboard. If you're using Celsius here, you need to use Celsius on the dashboard. If not, like I said before, it throws up a bunch of funny numbers. That's good. So now that we got the software done, let's go ahead and flash this bad boy. Alright, to flash it, what we need to do is we need to tie this yellow, which is our GPIO zero connection, to ground. <clears throat> Before I do that, let me put my serial port. Just so we can see what's going on. Let's go ahead and take that back out and reset it, see what happens. For some reason, I'm not sure what it is with this ESP01, but it throws up a bunch of funky characters up when it does on the serial port. So as a matter of fact, you know what we're going to do? We are going to do the obvious. Ha! Look at that. Got another one. Let's unplug this Jacko. Look at that. Now it's really throwing up gang signs. Swore I had it working. Swore. So I do not know what the problem is currently, so... So ladies and germs, I'm back. Found the problem. Uh, after uh, solving this technical difficulty, it was one part my problem uh, and fault. And the second one was uh, I found out that Cayenne does not like when you put uh, this uh, line of code in to solve for temperature. I, I, I don't know why. And I think it's because when it spits this out, Cayenne actually does a calculation on top of it which gives it all kinds of funky code. So when you use the code, use this bottom line. Use the Fahrenheit, and then you can adjust it within uh, the Cayenne uh, desktop. Uh, after using different measurements, uh, on my other devices, I found out that this is correct. So, so this is the plan. If you use this code, use this line. Comment out the Celsius line of code. Do not use it. As a matter of fact, we're just going to do this. I just did that. Yes, I just did that. Use this line of code and then you can adjust the Fahrenheit. Second thing is... <laughs> Don't know if you can see this or not, but here's your negative. That's your uh, sensor um, output and that's the positive lead. Well, uh, my dumbass had it in the uh, sensor's uh, output, which was giving it false readings uh, to the, the actual ESP01. So all of that was solved. Uh, the gang signs are gone, and that what was that's what was causing the gang signs was the fact that it was feeding at 3.3 volts across the, uh, the input on the ESP01, on GPIO2. So... That is pretty much it. Uh, we solved the problem, so let's go from the beginning. Um, 
just to recap, the, this is a wiring diagram that you need to follow if you need to if you want to flash the ESP01. Um, these resistors here, I use I use 1Ks or I use 2.2Ks. Um, either way, it works fine. Uh, the programming chip piece, you can use actually a jumper wire. You don't have to have a switch or a push button. Um, and do make sure that you use 3.3 volts. Um, that being said, let's go to pinouts as well. I'll have this posted uh, in the comment section uh, so you can have this is a diagram. I have all of them. So it's nice to have. And then uh, last, I hope that answers uh, the question um, from Siu Nahan. Uh, well, if it doesn't, please do uh, comment in, in the new video. Uh, let me know if, if something I've done is, is incorrect. But um, just make sure when you are flashing that you, you, you bring down GPIs, you brings GPIO zero down by plugging it into ground, flash it, then set up uh, Cayenne as we've done before in past uh, in past videos uh, by using the virtual channels according to this piece of code. Uh, of course, it could change depending on what your situation is, as always. But uh, as of that, um, I'm still getting readings and it's still working. I've had it on for about two hours now and uh, we're good to go. So thank you for watching and if you have any comments, please do post them down below and hit that like button if you appreciate this video and we will talk to you later.